Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and today I'm making a first impressions video on the new OSRS boss, the Phantom Muspa. In this video, we're going to talk about what the new boss is, like the quests and the requirements for it. I'm going to go over the fight and how to kill it. We'll discuss its loot table, what some of the unique drops are on that loot table, and finally, I'm going to throw down some highlights from my first couple days of the new boss. I'll be talking about the fight mechanics in this video, but this is not going to be my full guide quite yet. Uh, I'm going to talk about like how to kill the boss, but I'll go into more detail in an actual guide in the near future. The next couple days after this video comes out though, I will be releasing a couple hour of videos where I do a full hour of this boss and a couple different setups. Those will likely be better to teach you than just this first impressions video if you're looking for more examples. To unlock the Phantom Muspa fight, you are going to need to complete the Secrets of the North quest. Uh, this is a master level quest, but really the prerequisite levels and the prerequisite quests are a lot worse than the quest itself. It really wasn't that tough to complete. It took me like an hour. Uh, there's one puzzle, like two boss fights, and that last boss fight is just a weaker version of the Phantom Muspa boss. Similar to like when you do Dragon Slayer 2, you fight a weaker version of Vorkath, and then you unlock the repeatable Vorkath after the quest. The boss is located in Weiss, which means that the Icy Basalt Teleport is very helpful for traveling to the boss. You can put this Weiss Teleport in your house if you bring 100 times the ingredients that you need. So 300 F Salts, 100 T Salts, and 100 Basalt. I don't know if I say them right, but we'll at least put them on the screen for you. Uh, you could also put it in your Portal Nexus, but that does require 1,000 times the ingredients instead, which is a lot more money, and you can just like make its own portal. It's not that big of a deal. The fight itself is not very complicated. He does have a few different attacks, and he can hit pretty hard if you don't pray correctly. Uh, especially towards the end of the fight, so even though it's not too intense, you can get KO'd in here though. The Muspa will spend most of the fight going back and forth between two different phases. When the Muspa is brown, it only uses melee attacks, so it has to follow the player around the room to catch up to them. Uh, it's a pretty popular choice to freeze the boss in this moment so that he can't catch up to you. As the fight goes on, there will be more spikes around the arena that you can't step on, so it is convenient to freeze him, but just cranking on him with range this whole time will still get the job done, especially if you're rocking like max range gear, even the Bofa and Crystal armor does crank. When the Muspa is green, it will be using range attacks, and you should use range against it. You could use range the entire fight, you could bring only range with you. Uh, I really only use magic on that melee phase so that I can freeze it, and then some blood spells to heal up a little bit. During this green phase, it still does have a magic attack that you need to be aware of. The Muspa will stand up and charge a purple ball, which will hit you pretty quickly. To avoid this damage, you need to swap your prayer over to protect from magic instead. Now, the magic can hit very hard, the most that I've taken from it so far is a 70. Also, when it hits you, it will inflict corruption. When you're corrupted, you do lose prayer points over time, so basically this attack can drain your health and your prayer points if you don't pray correctly. Now, this is the attack that I got blasted by the most while learning the fight so far. You don't have a lot of time to react to it, so you really should be focusing on that during this phase. When the Muspa is ranging you, you use protect from range, but be ready to flick over to protect from magic at any time. The Phantom Muspa is going to switch back and forth between like the brown and green phase after you do enough damage to it. Whenever it switches phases, it will spawn some spawn spikes in the room, including spikes right under your feet. Remember to move over one square whenever the boss switches phases. These spikes do not hit very hard, so it's not going to like get you killed, you won't get knocked out by this very likely, but taking a few spikes during each fight is going to kill your food supply pretty quickly, so you got to be sure to move over when the boss switches phases before you switch overheads and potentially your gear. The Phantom Muspa does have two special attacks to watch out for. When he does those specs, the room goes dark for a little bit, for just like a few seconds, so it's pretty easy to tell that something different is happening rather than just like changing phases. One of the special attacks will spawn a few spikes around the room, and they will be moving around the room. They are pretty slow, but they will chase the character down for a little while, like the character being you, so make sure that you keep your feet moving a little bit more during this. After like 20 to 30 seconds, these spikes will freeze in place, so even though they aren't following you anymore, it'll still take up some of the arena. Watch out for those. The other special attack will cause the Phantom to teleport around the room in a consistent pattern. It's also going to throw out some Shadow Balls that you need to dodge. Lucky for us, at the moment, there is a safe spot for these. If you want to copy paste this tile marker into your rune light, it is in the description. You just copy the code, right click on your minimap, and import tile marker. You can still attack the Phantom Muspa during this phase. I don't really suggest you do this unless you're using a T-Bow or a Bofa. Crossbows have pretty good range, so you may not get dragged out from the safe spot, but if you're using a weapon without really solid range, your character might run a couple of steps to those further spots that the Muspa spawns to. Now, this really only matters if you're using the safe spot tile, and it's very possible Jagex would remove this. I figured if they would remove move this safe spot that they would have done it in the first day or two, but we will see. Once you get the Phantom Muspa to about 150 health, it will teleport to the center of the room, and in a few seconds, it's going to unleash a big shockwave attack that covers the entire room. The only way to dodge this is to just hide behind some of the spikes in the room, which you, you do have a few seconds. 
The Musma will now have a prayer shield that you have to knock out before you can finish the kill. He does look a little bit different, but he is currently in that ranging phase. So he's going to use ranging attacks and the occasional magic attack that you have to flick your protect from magic for. The only thing he'll be doing the rest of the fight is like the range and the magic attacks. You will not see any more melee Muspa from here on out once this prayer shield starts. To do damage to the prayer shield, you have to hit it with prayer draining attacks. The best option at the moment is to put on some sapphire enchanted bolts with a crossbow. But if you're using any other weapon, you can just use smite while you attack and it will damage the prayer shield. This can be tough sometimes to flick between protect from range, smite, and occasionally protect from magic. So the crossbow with sapphire bolts is like really solid. Once you KO the prayer shield, you get back to fighting the normal Muspa. It will be a ranged Muspa for the rest of the fight, but every three to four attacks, it's gonna spawn more spikes around the room, including some under your feet, so you have to watch out for that. Overall, I do really enjoy the Muspa fight. It's very engaging and active, but not too difficult. But you can also, you can get KO'd if you're not careful. So there's a good balance there by a long shot. And also, it, not only is it a lot of fun to grind, but the loot table at the moment is pretty wild. They did nerf some of the drops early on. It was giving way too many, like, noted herbs. And also, it gives supplies while you're fighting it, like, unnoted, like, sharks, summer pies, like, potions to use. And they, they made those a little bit less common because you were able to stay for quite some time, only, like, a few days in. Overall, the drop table is is still pretty stacked it's very common to get like a couple hundred K from one drop and that doesn't include the uniques uh, at the moment the Venator shard is the big ticket item at the time of making this video the shard is just over seven mil in price you need five shards to make a Venator bow so the bow is sitting at about 37 mil when I make this vid the new bow is interesting if you haven't heard much about it it uses phantom essence for charges similar to how like a blowpipe would use Zora's scales for charges and it also uses arrows uh, the ammo can go up to dragon arrows the benefit of the bow is that it uses an attack that bounces off monsters, so it can hit multiple monsters, including bouncing back to your original target if it hits multiple monsters. It's kind of like using Chinchampas to get extra damage when there's a lot of monsters around. Uh, it's not necessarily best in slot anywhere that I have noticed or I've seen. I, I haven't used it, I'm just going based off of uh, what I can see from the weapon and how other people are using it. But it's still pretty sweet. Uh, not being best in slot is why it's not even like... It, it, usually a brand new item would be like a few hundred mil, like less than a week after release, and this is already under 40 mil. Uh, it's still a pretty expensive bow in general, like 40 mil is no joke, but at the same time, it's not going to be best in slot anywhere currently. Uh, we got a bunch of new bosses coming in hot, not only Wildy reworks, but some Desert Treasure 2 bosses that might uh, change that up a little bit. You can also use 150,000 of those Phantom Essence on an Imbued Heart to make a Saturated Heart. This just upgrades the Imbued Heart to give three more magic levels than it would have before. It's not a massive boost, but it is an increase when it comes to best in slot mage gear, so that is pretty solid overall. Uh, the other big thing is the Ancient Icon, which can be used to upgrade your Ancient Staff into an Ancient Scepter. Uh, this just increases the effects of Ancient Spells by 10%, so you freeze for longer, you heal for more, stuff like that. It's actually a pretty solid upgrade. Let's go ahead and dive into a few highlights. Easty, pleasty. Very nice. Do it for the ancient icon number two and a spirit seed and dragon bolts. What the hell is this drop, dude? All right, second ancient icon. Take the shot I'll take the for the pet. Nobody take the shot before me. How about we take it at the same time? No one take a shot. Ventor shard. I said the wrong thing. It's like Venator. There's an extra A in it. I don't. I don't know what to say, dude. I almost PB on that one too. Let's get the fuck out of here. Get get the fuck out of here. Pick it up and get the fuck out of here. You know what? Teleport without it. Go fuck yourself. What just happened, dude? No way. <laughs> Fifty-one KC shard. Let's go. What's in the what's in the what's in the fucking box? Oh, there was a Venator shard. It worked. It worked. Oh my god. Am I fucking alone on that one? So some of the other highlights are muted thanks to me listening to copyrighted music on stream and then just grabbing the clips, but then also these non-copyrighted clips we got were a little messed up on this one. I also had a few PBs that were pretty solid, but um, I've reset my PB enough times that I'm gonna wait like a week to really get a good idea of what's a really fast kill and what's just a kind of fast kill. Uh, that is gonna wrap it up for this first impressions video though, everybody, about the new Phantom Muspa boss. Like I said early in the video, this is not meant to be my Muspa guide. It's just a run 
down on the fight and how I am liking it so far. Uh, I will be uploading a couple hour of videos, like full hour videos with a few different setups uh, in the next couple of days, and I'll be looking to make an actual full guide in a couple of weeks down the line. Thank you very much for watching this Phantom Muspa first impressions video, everybody. If you enjoyed the video or you just got some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I do stream on Twitch, which should be linked on the screen and in the description. And then I'm also on Discord. I have a Discord that should be linked in the description. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and best of luck on your Muspa grind.